Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all your peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, 
Then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom will be like the new day. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interest on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the world Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interest, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Together, let's read the appointed psalm. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless Bless the the Lord, Lord, O my soul, and and forget forget not all all his benefits. He forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. He redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with mercy and loving kindness. He satisfies you with good things, and your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. A reading from the book of Hebrews. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them. For they could not endure the order that was given. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrified was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, into the city of the living God, the heavy, heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks by which we offered God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for indeed our God is a consuming fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her immediately, she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrites, 
Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise be to thee, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Memory is a wonderful, precious, and fragile thing for us humans. Take, for instance, my mom, who has been struggling with dementia for over 12 years. It's not Alzheimer's, because that's the one we all know. It doesn't really have a name, I don't think, but it was brought on by sleep deprivation originally. My dad had died, and my mom stopped sleeping. Two years after that, her brain gave up and said, I can't do it anymore. So she got some treatment, some psychological treatment, some medical treatment to help her sleep. She already had sleep apnea, so they helped her deal with that better. Um, And then she got bariatric surgery and lost 100 pounds, which made it easier for her to breathe because she has COPD, which also is a problem for breathing and sleeping. And she improved almost, almost back to the way she was before all of this. But then slowly and surely, it came back over the years. And she's now at a place where she still knows who we are, she knows where she's at, but if you were to ask her questions like, where have you lived in your life? She'll say, well, I was born in Wyandotte, we lived in Trenton, and now I live here. And that skips a whole bunch of other places in the middle. But then if you say, well, you remember that apartment we grew up in? She'll jump right in and run with it and be able to tell you all the details. So that's where she's at with her dementia right now. But it is getting a little bit worse, and whenever you put someone in a home, it tends to get even a little more worse because they're out of their own environment. So yesterday, when I was with my sister helping to clean out my mom's apartment, my mom called to see how we were doing. And I had just pulled out a bunch of stuff from a trip they had taken with my sister. And I said, oh, I'm looking at stuff from the trip you did to Florida. And she said, we went to Florida. And my sister's face went, because it was a very memorable trip. It was one of these on a shoelace type trips. They rode the bus from Michigan to Florida. They were they sat through a timeshare presentation so they could get the timeshare for free. (laughs) But the bus broke down about 15 hours outside of where they were staying, and it took them 12 hours to get the new bus and everyone onto it. So it was very memorable. My sister was heartbroken that she couldn't remember it. But as soon as we started to talk about it, the memories came back, and she remembered. So we learned how to deal with her memory, and we don't say, you don't remember that anymore, or at least we try not to, but we do ask her questions that are leading so that she remembers. And about the time this started, there was a news story about memory, and it was about a famous person who was relating a situation that they had been in where there was danger. And someone did fact check, and that person wasn't at the event where there was danger. And so people were talking about this person lying or making things up, and many doctors came out to say, memory isn't set in stone. Memory can be changed. It's not a bunch of facts that we just call up and repeat, it changes as we talk about things. So you know that fish story, the first time you tell it, the fish is this big, and then this big, and then that big? That actually does happen. 
in our minds. And if we tell a story often enough with the new details, they become memories in our mind. So if you and your sibling have a memory that's different, it's because you just remembered it differently. And that's part of the reason why we have four Gospels. They saw things differently and remembered them differently. Memory, though, is what makes us different than all of the other animals in God's creation, right? We, our stories, our histories, our collective history make up who we are as a people. And animals don't have it quite the same, although there is some proof that animals do have some individual memory and collective memory. So for instance, your dog will remember if you love them. So when you walk in, your dog will be excited because this is the place I get love, and this is the person who gives it. And on the flip side, your dog will remember if you beat it. When you walk into the room, the dog will cower and hide because he knows that that's the place where pain comes from. And cats, um, if you watch these videos that people put out of cats knocking things off of counters, often they'll do it only when you're in the room and they'll look to see if you're paying attention. They know that this person's watching me and that it'll get a reaction. They also know the person that loves them and will come to that person when they're in need of that love. So animals do have some sort of memory, but they don't tell stories and they don't um, collectively remember. So how do we, as a species, deal with memory over the long term? We record it. That's how writing came into being. We wanted to be able to put stuff down so that John's version wasn't the only version or the wrong version. Someone else's version or ours collectively were put down. So we record our history, our memories, and then we recite them back. The whole public school system is based on remembering civics from the past to make good citizens for now. That's what it was based on. So that collective remembering, reciting of history. And, and we know that that's fallible. It's not perfect because whoever gets to write the history gets to put their spin on it. And whoever teaches it gets to put their spin on it. So again, it's not set in stone. It changes. For Christians, we have that as well. We've recorded our memories in scriptures, in other writings, and we recite it back and forth. We read it every Sunday. We hear it preached. But then we also have another element of remembering, and that is sacraments and liturgy. The sacraments and liturgy, which take action on our parts together to make, us, make it work. So it makes that story a little bit different. We also teach it to our children in Sunday school. We remember it in classes together. We sing it through the hymns and the psalms in worship. And I think hymns are a special way in general that we remember our history. Um, it's one of the places where we sing our history, our memories, regularly, right? Um, and that's showing up again in classrooms for kids, right? That you sing a song so that kids will remember um, what they're supposed to be learning or doing. So my kids learn the song, It's Time to Clean Up, and I still sing it. Um, <laughs> they probably don't remember it, but I do. Um, but church is the place that we have that the most, and that cements the story in our brain. We have smells in worship, right? Incense and flowers, and just the smell of a particular building, especially an older building. Um, it's not musty in here, but it has its own smell, its own atmosphere here. And so that helps us to remember the story. And then we focus each week on a particular part of the story. 
So for instance, look at our psalm today. It begins with the phrase, bless the Lord, which means praise the Lord, give thanks to the Lord, lift up the Lord's name in humble adoration. And then it immediately says, forget not, forget not. Don't forget what God, who God is, what God's doing, what God will do. And then the psalmist goes on to remember what God does. God forgives. God heals. God redeems. God has mercy and loving kindness. God gives us satisfaction by giving us what we need. God gives us renewal. God executes judgment and righteousness for the oppressed. God is made known through, the, through Moses and the children of Israel. God is compassionate and merciful, slow to anger, and is kind. Remember that, our psalmist is telling us. Remember those things. And then there is the liturgy, which I think with this psalm helps us the same way uh, learn the story. We begin by blessing God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. We know that by heart, and we say it every Sunday. And then we have the Gloria, which has almost all of the elements that the psalmist mentions. Um, there's a blessing, there's remembering of forgiveness and mercy, and then remembering Jesus as God or the Son of God. And then we hear the scriptures. So in today's scriptures, we hear about healing in the gospel reading. We hear about redemption in our epistle or second reading. Uh, in it, it says, yet once more, yet once more, saying, okay, this happened before and now it's happened again. And that is God has removed the old and renewed, made new what is now. There's mercy and loving kindness for the healing of that crippled woman who had been suffering for 18 years, and Jesus didn't want to let her suffer not one more minute, so he did it on the Sabbath, giving us what we need, satisfaction. In Isaiah, we hear, the Lord will guide you continually and give you water like a spring of water. God execute, executes righteousness and judgment for the oppressed. Again, think of that woman just how hard and difficult her life had been for 18 years. God has made known to us through not only Moses, but through Isaiah, through Hebrews, through the stories of Jesus, and through Jesus telling us about the commandments. He's teaching in that story that the commandment not to work doesn't mean we can't do good deeds. It doesn't mean we can't feed our animals and heal the crippled. It means we're not supposed to, you know, labor at our works. We're supposed to find rest in God. God is compassionate and merciful, slow to anger, and is kind. Now, this one I struggled with a little bit because in that gospel reading, I'm not sure that Jesus isn't angry. <laughs> <laughs> he gets a little, you know, when he talks back to them. But over time, God has really been slow to anger and compassionate and kind toward God's creatures. And then in worship, we do it all over again with the Nicene Creed. We remember the whole story in the Nicene Creed from the beginning until Jesus comes again. Our prayers are, another, are other reminders of what God is doing, what God will do, what God has done, reminding us that God is with us. And then we have confession and absolution, another one of those. Well, all of these are action in some way, but this one um, is, you know, a sacramental um, event in the worship, and so we participate in God's saving grace, God's forgiveness. We kneel, we confess, and then we hear that forgiveness blessed upon us as individuals and also as a community. We share God's peace, which also calls us to peace. And then we have communion, the biggest act, action that we have during worship. It is the story of salvation, the giving of blessing through Jesus, the forgiving of sins in receiving as well as the gift of Jesus' body and blood. 
It's an action that we remember. So even if you couldn't hear the words anymore, even if you couldn't see what was going on when you smelled the wine or tasted the bread, you would know that Jesus died on a cross for you. And that would be a part of your DNA, your be whole being. And then we bless God again in the post-communion prayer of, oh, look at what you just did. We're so grateful. <laughs> Thank you for that. And then we receive God's blessing in return at the end. And the final hymn brings it all back around again. Memory is a huge part of who we are as God's children and will be a huge part as we share that story with others. And then I have one little caveat as a pastor. Memory, again, is malleable and can be messed up, and we can forget pretty quickly when we're not together. And we remember pretty quickly when we gather together again. And that is, for me, one of the biggest reasons why we need to gather regularly in some format together because it's easy to forget that God loves you so much that Jesus died and is raised for you. It's easy forget to forget that God loves the whole world, all of God's creation, as we go out in the world and we bump up against things we don't like. It's easy to forget what happens in this place as important. So that, as a pastor, is my admonishment to you that not only to remember what we're doing, but to come and be reminded of what we're doing so that you can remember it again. Amen. As we remember and confess our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplication and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, hear our prayer. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness 
all the days of their life. Lord, hear our prayer. We beseech thee also to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially the President Joseph, Congress, and the Supreme Court, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Lord, hear our prayer. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Lord, hear our prayer. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Odette, Bert, Beth, Robin, Ed, Howard and Denise, Dorothy, Phil and Jan, Richard and Sharon, Jennifer, Adler, Jim, Jamie, Beth, Kenny, Brian, Joy, Sandy, Lori, Christine, Witt, Rose, Dawn, Brett, Jim, Richard, Liam, Jan, and Ori, Mike, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. And we pray for the Episcopal Anglican Province of Alexandria, the Honorary Canons of the Cathedral of St. James, St. John's Online Streaming Ministry. We pray for prisoners, for the unemployed, for those in the armed forces. We pray for Ukraine and Russia. Lord, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, especially those who died in the church fire in Egypt, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. John the Evangelist, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, Lord, hear hear our prayer. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. For those of you who are joining us online, let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that thou art truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer thee praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim thy resurrection. I love thee above all things and long for thee in my soul. Since I cannot receive thee in the sacrament of thy body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with thy grace, Lord Jesus, 
and let me never be separated from thee. May I live in thee and thou in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Let us with gladness present the offering and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, in our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glory glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and did institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, 
the memorial thy son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed, blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.